It's Python on Hardware Time. Yay! Okay. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Well, okay. let me start up the headline generator. Man, Shirt it was a crazy week. Python snakes its way to the STM32. We will play this video a little bit later at the end for top secret. Yeah, so But CircuitPython snakes its way to the STM32. It's uh, should the analog input of the ST32 F4 port of CircuitPython using Moo. And um, in case you didn't know, we are working on all sorts of things with the STM line. Yeah, it's actually CircuitPython 5 was supposed to be mostly BLE, but it's kind of turning into a little bit of an STM party, now which is it's STM which is fine. And it's and it and wireless. It's cool. So that's why the poster that we'll have in the store soon has these little wireless things. But it's also it's also STM32. It's cool. Um, this was kind of breaking news. This breaking is news. Serpente. A tiny circuit Python prototyping board. If you remember the Digispark from a while ago. Which is no longer, I think it's no longer being made. Yeah, uh, Arturo posted this up and I'm like, this is so cool, I immediately bought four. And you can either get it as a Type-A USB plug or a Type-C. I love in. the Type-C thing yeah, there, because that's cool. nice. And it's basically like a trinket, but he added some flash, so there's a lot more storage. So you, yeah. you get circuit Python with a little bit of flash chip and it's like, you know, easy to plug into a breadboard. And if you've got a DigiSpark project, you can upgrade it with yep. a SAMD21, which is like 16 billion times faster. All right, this is a Mach X O prog. It's the programming lattice on the Mach X O2 with CircuitPython. This is a library that allows you to update the internal flash on one of these FPGA boards. Oh, that's kind of handy. That's right. Oh, so, we should add that to the um, our helper. Cause you know, I wrote an AVR programmer because I was like, I was like, I'm. I wanted a way to do drag and drop like yeah. AVR programming. This is really That's handy. Cool. Okay, next up, uh, one of my favorite podcasters and people in the world, Scott Hanselman, had Scott on the show. Double, Double Scott. Scott. And uh, this was Learning Circuit Python, which is Scott, Scott Shawcroft, um, with the Han Hansel Minutes Technology Podcast. Um, besides Adafruit, I think the Hansel Minutes Technology Podcast is like one of the longest running tech. Podcast. So with Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell, yeah, it's you know it's a decade, and he has 700 episodes, so he's up there too. Um, so listen in, Scott did a really good job. Well, Scott's. This is the preview that Scott showed on the Show and Tell, and I also had this in the newsletter this I week. Got the Show and Tell if you want to see it live. Yeah. So far, the the name that someone put in the chat is kind of nice. What P is it? Pie Drop. Ooh, Ooh Pie Drop. Yeah. Pie drop. So well, that might be a name. Okay. Also, we have a new uh, segment inside of the newsletter, and also in this segment where we take a look at what folks on the circuit python team are doing um there's a lot going on so we wanted to try to have like here's some of the stuff they're up to so this is what brian was working on um you probably know this is a temperature sensor and then this is the uh, thing that he showed on the show and tell then we also have that's um, cool yeah that was in progress oled that's not the final oled yeah. that's why he was like oh it's not quite working but now it looks great all right and then this was from uh jepler and this is a fun project that Jepler made. Created a prototype PCB that bridges the user port, serial port of the classic Commodore 64, and any feather. That's cool. And then this is um, working uh, through a rework of the internal pins, a pin organization of the STM32 port. So remember we were talking about that before? Well, this is what goes into making a port. Yeah, or something. and what's interesting is, you know, we are, you MicroPython has STM32F support of m multiple varieties, which is super cool, but we have to architect it to fit within the standard circuit Python hardware API and the way we define boards. So it's, it, there's a lot of this underpinning structure that we have to get into a really good spot because then we'll be able to, just like you know, you saw the Serpenti, so we didn't make the Serpenti, that's from the community. Yeah. People are able to create their own boards and easily add them into our port support um, so that we can make downloads yeah. for them because we, we have a standardized structure. To be straight up, like, we probably wouldn't get to doing this. We well, like, I wouldn't get to this. We wouldn't get to this This is cool, long. but I'm, I, I'm so busy. Yeah, and so other people can make their own CircuitPython boards. Um, it'll show up at circuitpython.org slash downloads. Arturo, who made this, is like, this is great because now anytime there's a CircuitPython update, there's an automatic build. You have two for my device. Um, okay, Melissa, working on the CircuitPython NVIDIA Guide, that so. guide went live, yeah. so this it's focused on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is kind of the most popular board right now, but the same code should work on like the TX1 and the TX2. We just, they were kind of pricey, so we didn't buy one. We okay. have a Nano. So on to some community stuff. This is um, the cover of the new Circuit Python and Moo book that's coming out in Japan, and they also posted up a little video. So I'm only gonna play 
a bit of it, but uh, this is a video that promotes some of the things you can do with CircuitPython on Circuit Playground Express and with Moo. Um, we have some updates on circuitpython.org. Uh, here's some of the new boards. This is the giant discovery board. This is the STM32F12 discovery board, which is what we're using to bring up CircuitPython. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great chip with a lot of uh, uh, support, and it has a ton of USB endpoints, which is why we're kind of focusing on that. But we're also going to support other STM32 chips like this STM32F411 dev yeah. board, and we'll just keep going. Yeah. Another uh, one that's new is the Pew Pew M4. This is the update to the Pew Pew with a nice uh, TFT screen, 7051 by DevShipu. Uh, hopefully we'll even work with MakeCode Arcade. I like how it has a AAA battery pack on the back, so you don't need a LiPo charger. Yeah. Uh, other community projects, this is um, from LaserGoo. It's a NOAA weather satellite tracker using CircuitPython powered Pi Portal. Currently modifying the tracker code that we have up, and they'll be adding um, the other NOAA 18 and 19 to track it simultaneously. Um, this is a cool project. This has been making the rounds. This is really neat. This is using a trinket. Also, uh, nice swords. this is uh, something I've been watching and now it's live. Yeah, you thought, you thought this was interesting. Yeah, so this is a micro bit based little drone and their Kickstarter went live today I believe or yesterday and I'm a backer and uh, I grabbed this video just to, to show you um, we'll see it's gonna ship next year 2020 the best part of a Kickstarter is imagining that you'll have it so um, right now I'm having a lot, a lot of fun um, but here's a video of it in action Next up, if you're thinking about going to PyCon, the call for speakers is up. A lot of people are doing Python on hardware now, so and now's look, your chance. And there's a little robot on the right. A little robot. Actually, there's two robots. Yeah. Ooh, a lot of robots. PyCon UK just happened, and there was a big community meetup. Thanks, Carlos, for posting this up. This was a bunch of Python on hardware folks hanging out, showing what they made. They made keyboards. So you got some MicroPython stuff, CircuitPython stuff, all sorts of Python on hardware things, got microbit things, and more. And that is the community news for the week. Yeah, do you wanna, do you want me to show this last this thing fast? So next up, let's do time travel. 